Well, why don't we get started tonight, and we'll see how long this takes. Uh, look, we have all evening. I'm fine having a nice, relaxing character mapping session. We're just going to sit back and, and think, talk about characters, try and make connections between them, challenge ourselves further. We have these five separate characters. Now, with what information can we extract from them to, to make a story as a dungeon master? This isn't an exercise necessarily as a player character, although a group of player characters can sit down and do this themselves with their characters if a DM doesn't want to. Uh, as you can see, hey, nice and simple MS Paint. There's, there's no, you know, I'm not using Photoshop. I'm not using anything fancy. I mean, even if I was using something fancy, because I know Photoshop can do, you know, this basic stuff, but do you have MS Paint? You can do this exercise as well. Now, something th uh, something to note here is this isn't the standard size starting canvas in paint. Uh, I ended up making it larger because I can zoom in and we can fill things out with a little bit more detail in each of what's well, they're not quadrants. I guess it would be a, a quintent uh, in, in each of our areas here. So when, when we make connections and we draw lines, I wanted to give us plenty of room. So I'm beginning this session with MS Paint on a large canvas, but drawn out or zoomed out so that we can see something broad about it. Yep, MS Paint, nice bread and butter. Keeping things simple if you're writing, if you're, you know, if you're drawing or all kinds of, um, at least in a planning stage, you may not want to use paint for a, a finished product. Maybe you do. Uh, I, I think there's some very impressive paint illustrations. In fact, didn't, uh, didn't Ringo from the Beatles, it, hasn't he been making some art in MS Paint? Anyway. Uh... But here, form fillable PDFs, uh, you could use OpenOffice. You don't even need Microsoft Office. MS Paint, very basic tools, and it's excellent for developing ideas and making these connections. Now, I do want to give a shout out. I, I don't think Macab Derek is here uh, right now, uh, but uh, Macab Derek is the one uh, in, in the community here that I know uses this style of planning. There's another method that we can examine the party and maybe this coming week we can uh, we can explore it in this other way to compare and contrast. But for tonight, I was feeling a little creative, and uh, let's let's get examining and drawing. Here, doop 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 doop. You may recall that we made five randomized characters. using our our character generator here. And the theme was to make a party of monstrous characters. And while we kept open all of the other options for character building, we restricted the races available to Volo's Guide to Monsters. And so these are the 13 choices that were available from that we ended up making a goblin a kobold an orc full blood not not a half orc a yonti pure blood and a tabaxi Let me bring them back up Oop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. and get our, our character up here. There we are. Well, you know that I, I do map making in MS Paint on this channel too, Black Wolf.
I'm going to scoot this over to the side. And so parts of it may be difficult for you all to read, but I want to make sure that I can click back and forth between uh, paint and my, my PDFs easily enough. <clears throat> uh, you know, the a lot of the characters here, uh, three of our five never, never had names suggested in chat. So I don't really have a name for them. Uh, maybe they, maybe they'll come up if if you're feeling a certain name, we can apply it. Uh, but our first character that we made was our was our goblin, and so for a placeholder, we had our goblin and our kobold. So we have Go uh, Gabo and Kobo, and then our Yanti pure blood. I put Yano. Samantha the Domain was our third character. Then we had our Yon T character. And lastly, we had Omnigo, uh, Omnigo Aniles. Oh, okay. Homestuck is done in MS Paint. Yes. Yeah, five, a five-member party, Tamarick. As you can see, we can... We can zoom in and we have plenty of room to draw. Nice big canvas. All right. <clears throat> when you're doing a character map, we want to list important facets of the character. Uh, these are locations, people, events that have significance. And while we can always go back and add more, challenge yourself. Can you come up with, what would you say would be the, the top five qualities of this character? And throw them out there. You know, here, I'll, I'll, I'll bring her back over and we can do a quick review. Especially drawing off her personality and backstory. Yes, Black Wolf. Uh, as I said, Gabo, Cabo, and Yano are placeholders because no names were offered for them. So her personality, it's not magic or anything really if you do it only halfway. Whatever I do, I give it all I've got. As well, great ideas are fine, but great results are what counts. Her ideal is discovery. Every experiment has the potential to reveal more secrets of the multiverse. Her bond is, I'm convinced it was sabotage that destroyed my, uh, my first laboratory and killed many of my friends, and I seek revenge against whoever did it. Her flaw is, Nothing is ever simple, and if it seems simple, I'll find a way to make it complicated. Hey, 12-sided, welcome. Uh, Black Wolf says if it's a placeholder for the goblin, might I suggest Ghibli for the goblin name? What, uh, why, so what, what is, 
uh, what what does Ghibli mean to you here? Uh, when or what would Moxie mean uh, to you, twelve sided? Now within this organization, and this was a Ravnica background, we're not going to be developing a Ravnica party, but we can use the the concept of the Izits to develop an organization. Uh, her employer, it could be. Uh, it could be a secret, like a, a some sort of a um, a fraternal order or something along those lines. Uh, but we can come up with this organization. Within it, we have a sibling is the head of a laboratory doing exotic research. Pardon me. She has a rival. I'm in regular communication with an instructor who set me on the course of my life and research. And in this case, the rival could be someone who constantly challenges her. And she could send in the document 2 plus 2 equals 4, and this professor will challenge her to, to think beyond and ask, why does it equal 5? You know, some, someone that could be, you know, it's, they're not against you, they're not an enemy, but someone who will challenge you, who will help you grow strong and even frustrate you. She has a non-guild contact, a former attendant, from the same laboratory, ran off to join the, in this case, the placeholder for the Celestia. And we got into a big argument every time we run into each other. Due to her monstrous origin, again, to us as humans, you received, dr uh, and, and we replaced it, uh, Draconic. Pardon me. Because she's a dragon, uh, she's a dragon blood sorcerer. You receive draconic insight that sent you on your path and occasionally receive new visions that guide you. And she carries a status symbol of her people, which is an owlbear feather cloak. Oh, it's 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 very bright. Um, here, I might be able to help tone it down some. There you go. I hope that helps. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad, Hark. Okay. Um, so, I in reading your descriptions, Black Wolf and 12-Sided Guy, so... Um, you know, maybe, maybe we call her, we can kind of pineapple the pen, the two together and call her, Gib Mox. Uh, this is the dark green. I could change it to a different color. Now, taking this back over, there's there's a few obvious there's a few obvious circles that we can begin to make. And I bet we could even go one, two, three, four, five. Black or brown? What do you mean, Tamric? First things first, 
In fact, uh, so we, we can make uh, Gabo here. Um, you know, if, if we're putting, if we're making her stuff green, uh, we can end up color coding it. But she has a sibling. Something that's very important to her is her uh, her institution. You know, we, we could call it the is it as a placeholder. Uh, but this this uh, science organization, uh, whether it's private or governmental or, uh, you know, su some super secret skunk work stuff. Um, I'm, I'm going to put is it up here, though. There's also this professor. Who's the rival? The Celestia? Who's the person who uh, defected from her organization to join another one? I'm going to just abbreviate this to Celeste. Uh, Tamaric, this is as this is as uh, as thick as it gets. If you'd like, I can always um, I can always zoom in more, since we have plenty of space. And of course, we can't forget our. Our dragon, who gives us the insight, who gave us the blood that made us the sorcerer that we are. Hello, O sheeps. What I'm going for with this first round, I want to go for the low-hanging fruit. I I want to go for the things that are obvious and uh, and that can help us uh, make connections easier amongst each other, or amongst um, uh, or amongst the uh, the others. Now, because her guild or this organization is very important to her, uh, we know that her sibling is also in this organization, as well as this, uh, this rival who is the professor. And so we can draw lines like so. That said, the sibling may not know the professor, but they do share in this organization, and they both share our goblin character, uh, Gibmox.
I think there's uh, two other things that we can that we can build. And one is there's this concept, right? Her bond. I'm convinced it was sabotage that destroyed my first laboratory and killed many of my friends. And I seek revenge against whoever did it. And so we can come back here to our circle uh, drawing tool. And we can put another... We can put another line. Uh, we could even... I mean, if we want to go like way out here, we can. Uh, we have a little bit of room down here. Revenge. Uh, and we could probably just put, like, lab explosion. She is, uh, she is a gold draconic bloodline sorcerer. And with the monstrous origin that's offered in Volo's Guide to Monsters, we rolled that she received, and it was supposed to be a divine insight uh, that sent her on her path. And instead, we took that idea... And because she is a product, probably through the science that she's studying, because she's a product of this uh, draconic fusion, we changed it from a, a divine insight into a draconic insight. And so there's a dragon that exists. All right, so, you know, could the, uh, could the revenge end up being tied to the professor or her sibling uh, possibly, but we, we haven't built out that far yet. And I, I want to add some more ideas to the map as we're building it. So now let's come down to our kobold character and I'll drag this over so we can do a quick little uh, review. So we have a, uh, a female kobold. Uh, she is a great old one warlock who carries around the Book of Shadows, making her a Tome Pact. Uh, she has a background as a fisher, and with her big story being uh, lobster wrestling. Her personality is as such, I need long stretches of quiet to clear my head, and my friends are my crew, we sink or float together. Balance is her ideal. Do not fish the same spot twice in a row. Suppress your greed and nature will reward you. The bond is I lost something important in the deep sea and I intend to find it. As well, she is obsessed with catching an elusive aquatic beast, often to the detriment of other pursuits. And as for... As for her monstrous origin as a kobold, you are the victim of a curse or a polymorph spell. Well, a couple easy ones. And in fact, we'll make Cabo. Uh, we'll, we'll go light brown for Cabo here. Uh, and I'm not talking about Cabo San Lucas either, but if any of you want a fun uh, a fun vacation destination spot, there you go. We're going to go here and start drawing some circles. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. I think we can make at least five. 
You want to own a vacation spot. Oh, wouldn't that be nice, right, O-Shapes? All right, so first things first. Uh, let's let's hop back over here. I'm going to drag this a little bit off screen so I can more easily swap between the two. In her fishing story, she claims to have wrestled a giant lobster. Um, so we could put lobster or sea creature. As well, let's not forget her patron as a warlock. I'd l you want to own Barcelona if someone wants to help with that. <laughs> Yeah, just a, a couple, uh, a, a couple cheap and easy payments. Ah, there's the thing that she lost in the sea. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, sheeps might not be very meek. She, she's, she's a, a rather headstrong sheep. Hmm. We're the victim of a curse or a polymorph spell, and so this is going to be something that is going to be affecting us as well. Our curse. And lastly, in taking a look here, She is a kobold, and kobolds are normally found in the service of dragons. Or at least are, are on the search for them here. She is very friendly, so she has a pool of friends. My friends are my crew. We sink or float together. Um, her background feature allows for her to fish and feed up to ten people. And her flaw is I'm, I'm obsessed with an aquatic beast, but that could very well be the uh, the lobster she got in fisticuffs with here. So I, I think we can even put dragon down here. Okay. Now let's let's make five let's make five spheres for Samantha. Hi, Blood Deuce. Yes, the second character we made this week was a kobold. You're a spicy salsa.
Samantha the Domain here is a female orc, mercenary veteran, rogue trickster. Her personality is as follows. I face problems head on. A simple, direct solution is the best path to success. I have a crude sense of humor, and I always appear like I'm about to kill everyone around me. Her ideal is might. In life as in war, the stronger force wins. As well as prowess. Killing all your enemies is the path to greatness. Her bonds are, I would still lay down my life for the people I served with. And I owe my survival to a non-orc. Her flaws are, I obey the law even if the law causes misery. And I am slow to anger, but when I do become enraged, I fight until my enemies are dead, no matter the cost. She is a scout with this mercenary group. Uh, and she's, she's young. Now... She's seven, but in orc physiology, uh, this actually has her being almost a grown adult. I mean, it's not going to be her next birthday, but she's she does not have the physique and characteristics of a human seven-year-old. She earned her name Domain as she shaves her own head and sometimes the heads of her foes in jest or simply to take a trophy slash scalp. She also is known to make her to make scraggy wigs out of the hair of animals that she considers to be powerful. All right, here's Samantha. Uh, why don't we, we're going to make her, let's get a strong color. We're going to give her orange. And now we'll go to our circle drawing tool and let's challenge ourselves. Can we come up with at least five different, you know, connections or things that would be relevant to her? Three. Four. Five. Oh, you know what? I also have to draw the lines to... Uh, I have to draw the lines to uh, to Cabo's spheres here. Okay. So, her mercenary troop. I'm going to put mercs. She feels very indebted to them. It's a part of her identity, right? She owes her survival to a non-orc. She laid down the life of the people that she served with. That also means we could put rescuer. So there's her mercenary band, her rescuer. She holds the law in high regard. So she's she's very lawful.
she has a trophy collection. And I'd imagine, um, you know, she owes her survival to a non-orc, that there could be her orc family if she was rescued from them, or if there was a battle and she was an orphan left between the skirmish of, of two orc, you know, tribes. Um, so she could still have orc friends out there that aren't a part of the mercenary group. Hello, Old Port Media. Uh, that's an excellent lurk emote. <laughs> uh, scraggy, kind of disheveled. Um, you know, it, it doesn't look very organized or professional. How is Cabo connected to the dragon thing? Because uh, kobolds are, are usually in the service to dragons um, or are pursuing a dragon for recognition of some kind. I think we could definitely make a line between Mercs and Rescuer. Now, um, uh, you know what? I, I'm going to save that thought for when, when we get to it here. We're going to put a line, and then you'll, you'll see where this is going. Now we have our Yonti Pureblood character, uh, who didn't get a name when we were making him, so I named him Yano, just as whoop, just as we had Gabo and Cabo for our goblin and our kobold, uh, as they went nameless as well. And let's see if we can. Uh come up with one two three Whoop. four and five And let's review Yano's personality. He's a very interesting character. Male, Yonti Pureblood, Chaotic Evil Alignment, Abjuration Wizard, and his background is Rakdos Cultist. This actually made him the second Ravnica background. Out of the 66 we were rolling for, we had two by this point. Um, and the Rakdos are, are more an organization for entertainment Kind of, kind of the the average Joe, um, uh, kind of a hedonistic cult um, uh, that you know you could bring in concepts of uh, of demon worshiping or something along those lines. And when we were developing this character, I said, "All right, so, pardon me, we have we have this Yonti pureblood, who by Yonti pureblood standards is chaotic evil." and not by our standards uh, uh, imposing those on an outside force. And as we discover more about his personality, maybe we can see just what would give him 
that kind of a designation. I enjoy breaking delicate works of art and fingers, which are sort of the same. I derive genuine pleasure from the pain of others. I prefer to be alone rather than among other creatures, including my own kind. Oh, pardon me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of beat today. Um, his ideal is his guild. My guild is all that really matters. So we have someone who's fiercely loyal to this organization. And remember, we're not setting this in Ravnica, so we can take the concept, you know, some elements of the Rakdos and, and institute them here uh, for him. But he is still loyal to an organization. As it's it's providing him, I mean, an income, training, maybe the ability to travel, uh, that kind of a thing. He has an aspiration. He strives to follow the path toward becoming an anathema. Uh, which, in his own society, is, you know, bigger, uh, a big baddie. Though this character is conflicted. Because he is out pursuing these more carnal joys. When his society of yon T, at least as it's presented by Volo's guide, and we can change it, this is our interpretation. Though the, the yon T society is, is actually, it's not that it's not evil by our standards, it's a lot more reserved than this kind of hedonistic character. And so I think we're exploring... Just how we can have someone be chaotic evil, pardon my yawns, chaotic evil within a quote-unquote evil society. His bond, I am devoted to Rakdos and live to impress him. I respect my superiors and obey them without question. My fate is theirs to decide. So, uh, Rakdos, in this case, is the demon leader of the Rakdos. And so, this is a, a demon of, um, you know, a violence, of uh, carnal pleasures, um, and someone who runs this grand, uh, this grand circus, uh, to which, you know, many people belong and distract themselves through their lives and... Um, or, you know, it, it's sort of like the, the last chance club for people because they, they can't get work anywhere else. And so they end up with the Rakdos because they'll take anyone and everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, old port. I missed what you're saying there. I was trying to catch up and chat. You just woke up three minutes ago with your head on your desk next to a bowl of ramen. Well, I hope it's good ramen, uh, and you can reheat it without too much issue. Let's see. Uh, he throws caution to the wind, and I put too much credence in the dictates of a particular god. In this case, so we have, we have someone who... Uh, Again, is conflicted. You know, is he following the dictates of, the dictates of Rakdos, or is he actually attracted to this cult? Because you know, it's the it, it's it's the misfit island. You know, it, it's all the 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 kids can go there and smoke cigars and play pool, even though they're only ten. Um, because there's no real dictates of Rakdos, but his people, uh, on the other hand. Um, you know, are very methodical and they they do worship in an organized fashion. Um, and so while he is out here trying to expand his horizons, um, he still finds himself falling into this regularity. And that's why it's so interesting to have this kind of a character 
You know, it's like he wants to lash out. He wants to, um, you know, here he's in his middle age. He's 50. And maybe he's just hit that point of stress, of feeling uh, crushed under the weight of his society, needing a release. And so he signs up with this cult. And here he is. Um, now, for guild contacts or the equivalent that we can translate them, a childhood friend of mine is an attendant in Rick's Mati, the Rakdos Guild Hall. Now, that's in Ravnica, but we can translate that uh, else uh, in some other way. That's an ally, a rival in the same uh, carnival. I was part of a two-person act until my former partner moved to a different troop. Hmm. And then we have a non-guild contact. I came from the Gruul, who still have relatives there. In this case, perhaps the Gruul would be reflective of the Yonti society. And so he still has family there. He thinks of them, even though he probably shouldn't. And yet he does because it's it's been... Um, you know, it was bred into him or and or, you know, if you want to go nurture nature, um, it's how he was raised. And I think we have a lot of really juicy bits here to pull from this character and put onto the map. So one of the big ones, of course, is we have the concept of this Rakdos character. You know, who is the leader and it doesn't even have to be a demon or some other fiend. Uh, this is a, effectively the cult leader. And I'll, I'll just put that in smaller letters. We have cult leader. He has family. We have our, um, we have our former partner. One, two, three, four, five. We have the childhood friend who's in this uh, who's in this cult uh so we have a cultist childhood friend And so there's a particular connection with the leader, though the cult itself is something meaningful broadly to him. Maybe he's stuck in the cult. So, uh, Tamarick, are, are you saying that? Uh, are you saying that perhaps he struck out and he joined the cult? And when the this game, this imaginary game, picks up, he's actually kind of being homesick and has second thoughts, uh, realizing that perhaps he's gotten in a little too deep and actually wants to go back to his society. Silver Pirates back. You're going to work on a Sherlock Holmes NPC build. Enjoy that. I bet you can have a ton of fun with that. Right. The cult was the fast way out, and now he's stuck. Oh, okay, Tamrick. All right. I think we can roll with that. We'll keep that in mind as we're going to develop the map.
Oh, that was that was Yano, and we need to put our our lines down. Okay, and our last, um, our last player character that we made was last night, and this is Omnigo Aniles, female tabaxi, lawful good, way of the long death monk, who's an Azorius functionary, so someone who's kind of like, uh, Judge Dredd, um, you know, she is the law. I have infinite patience with the dolts and boars I'm forced to deal with every day. And I'm very literal. She is literally literal. And doesn't appreciate metaphor or sarcasm. Her guild is all that really matters. So we have three people who have this strong attachment to their organization. And when you see a trend like that, if three of our five people have this as a result... This is going to indicate that the broad monster society from which they come uh, could very well be uh, factionalized along, uh, along. well, there, there's a lot of different alongs. Pardon me. I'm beholden to an Azorius arrester who captured the criminal who killed my parents, saving me from the same fate. I was traumatized by witnessing a crime as a child. Her guild ally, someone who's, you know, in the in her precinct. Hey, oh sheeps, thank you. Old Port, you say you're working on a character to include the bane of any DM with a vain big bad evil guy? Subtle spell and prestidigitation. Ooh. So one of her childhood friends is now a precognitive mage in service of the guild. Her rival in this precinct or, or organization is a homunculus in the halls of New Prov, which is like the, the big headquarters for the Azorius in Ravnica. Um, is a... Uh, I know a homunculus in the halls of New Prov who can get things done behind the scenes. Her non-guild contact? I have a friendship with a Demir agent who sometimes funnels me secrets about Azorius activities. So you have... Uh, th this would be her being a police officer going on the streets and having a whistleblower friend on the police so that she... You know, who watches the Watchmen? She does. She is obsessed with some kind of a lost civilization. And as a tabaxi quirk, you are a font of random trivia from the lore and stories you have discovered. And our tabaxi, let's see. We've already used green, brown. Uh oh. Who who put a who put a mask on my face? Huh? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever did that, thank you. That was a fun one. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed seeing that, too. Rorschach and Batman in one. Uh, also, I'm surprised I spelled that correctly. That would be Red Cap. Of course. The Fae are known to be tricksters. Thank you very much for that red cap. That was that was fun.
I, I I enjoy the masks, and if I if I catch it and I can see it and interact with it, I'll do my best to try and role play through it too. Brown, orange, green, purple. So I'm between green and purple. Let's get something a little brighter, perhaps, then. Let's let's do... Uh, maybe we'll do red. The Fae are a bunch of jerks, but you say that with a smile. So it's almost like a badge of honor, huh? Uh, Silver Pirate the Mask... Uh, if you look down below, there's uh, there's uh, an instruction on how to apply the mask to my face. <laughs> All right, let's give Omnigo some bubbles. One, two, three. Four, five. And she has a lot to go on here. Uh, so she is loyal. She is very loyal to... Uh, and I'll, I'll put Azorius. Oh, I, I got to put a little bit more gel in my hair right up here. <laughs> a banana hawk? A nana hawk? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Oh my goodness. That was fun. Uh, she owes, uh, she, uh, feels that this person who saved her, um, so, so a, a law enforcement agent that, that saved her from, uh, crime is what brought her into this organization. Um. <laughs> there is the mole. Right? That feeds her information. She has the childhood friend. We say childhood like she's... Like she's not, but... She's on the cusp of womanhood for the tabaxi here. Uh, as she is 15 and the tabaxi age faster than the, uh, than humans do. Uh, then of course we have our rival, which is that homunculus that, you know, kind of pushes paper and, and tries to beat her with, with, uh, his knowledge and his resources. So while she's out, you know, kind of hitting the streets and doing the field work, he's staying behind and he's he's doing lab work. And they have they have developed a rivalry of some kind. Is it fierce and makes them enemies? Are they frenemies? Um, or is it just uh, they always compete against each other so that they're trying to improve? Right. Uh, both of them, you know, might might be looked down upon, whether it's their stature or their age. Or the homunculus is a tiny little thing. Um, and so they each are trying to outdo each other to grow strong and act as proof. Um, but we'll put... Um, we'll put something like uh, records. Records, department. Rival.
Now, there's a couple other... There's a couple other circles that we can draw for her very easily as well. As there is some kind of a lost civilization that she wants to find. And... Um, there's whatever, whatever this crime, right? She was brought aboard to fight crime and, and to go against it. Um, she witnessed a crime that, that killed her, that got her family killed. It made her an orchin, an orchin, an urchin, an orphan. So an orchin, I guess. Um, so she was traumatized by witnessing the crime, but this could very well be separate from the, the crime that took her parents from her. And so we have these other areas that we can explore. So we have this uh, lost. A lost civilization. And. Perhaps a notorious uh, criminal individually or a family. Arrival of love. Hey, there's nothing saying that yet. Uh, that maybe, maybe she, uh, maybe she actually likes this, uh, th this little homunculus. Or you know, we could we could reflavor it. If not a homunculus, uh, we could roll in in Volo's guide, and uh, and or uh, and, and just choose one of the smaller races. Which actually, wait, I think that's a, that would just be goblins and kobolds. Unless is there another small race in? Uh in Volos? I don't think the Kenku are technically considered to be small-sized. If any of you know, then remind me. I think they're technically medium, but Kenku are on the small side of medium. You know, so we could roll and actually have it be... Um, a goblin, or, or we could just have it be another tabaxi if we really wanted to. Because, again, the, the concept of a homunculus might not exist because the Azorius don't exist. We're using this as inspiration. So, <coughs> pardon me. The broad concept is she knows someone in the records department who with whom she shares a rivalry. Ah, thank you, Old Port. They are technically medium? Okay. Maybe they're rivals over a beloved pet, like when couples split and argue over the dog. Kenku are medium creatures around five feet tall. Okay. So, yeah, they're on the shorter side of medium, but they're technically medium. Well, however, however we'd want to do this, I think we have some great ideas. And and this is going to get into the next into the next part of building, uh, of building this character map. Because we're listing out the points that we know. And from here... Especially if they haven't been defined by... Uh, we're pretending to be DMs right now. If they haven't already been defined by our player characters, we're taking their character sheets, we're drawing elements out, and we're, we're plopping them on the table. And from here, we can offer connections. And I'll, I'll show you an example here uh, soon enough. As soon as I draw some lines. Because, whoop, lines are fun. There we go. Now. 
Hey, look at this. I know the lines might appear a little thin, but if you remember, if you remember with what we started, you can now see that we've taken our characters and we've started building out this relationship web. And now we can start making connections. And I, I wish that I can embolden the, the lines here for you all. Uh, unfortunately, with, uh, I mean, with paint, it is what it is. But I, I'll, I'll zoom in and out as we need to. Uh, but here, here's the basic character map for the individual characters. Uh, possibly Red Cap. I mean, we might be able to find something central to them all and, and put that as a rally point here. But what I'd like to do first, I want to get up and uh, stretch my back a little bit. And uh, l let's take a, a short break as we've made the first part of the character map. I'm going to have to go back and recolor this to be green. Now, what I want to do with your all's help is let's build the world and build connections between the characters. Or if we see connections that are internal to a character, similar to how uh, the Is It uh, organization that Gibmox belongs to is uh, also has a connection to her sibling because her sibling also works in this organization. Tamric, exactly. You see Dragon twice. Now, we could connect the dragons or we could leave them separate or I could even say we could connect Patron to Dragon. Because what is a great old one if not a dragon? And dragons can often read minds and, uh, and you know, polymorph. And uh, and you know what? Our, our Cabo here is under a curse and or a polymorph. And so we might even be able to link the the patron there. But well, I, I, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I'm going to get up and take a break. And when we come back, let's look at everything that we have and start making connections and drawing story elements out of it. So that way we have a cohesive party that they're linked with each other. And so that if a storyline focuses on the sea creature that Cabo had fought before, that could very well draw in someone else in a different way. And, and yes, so we're also going to do things like uh, like indicate a rivalry or um, or it, it, if we zoom back in next to the lines, we can also make notes such as works for or, you know, so so the line, the line along is it a sibling is uh, works for. You know, and it's showing that relationship and we can even make an arrow indicating that it's more of a the sibling is connected to the is it not necessarily the is it to the sibling uh, in that case. And uh, and so we can start adding some details. So BRB, everyone, put your thinking caps on because we're going to continue to illustrate this party and draw out story elements from it. <laughs> 